This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Posing, exposure, composition. If you ever find yourself taking photos during golden hour, these simple tips so that I'm about to give you are going to be extremely clutch, way. I promise you. Now, when I shoot golden hour, I like to get a mixture of backlit shots where I'm gonna get more of a dreamy look, aesthetic to my photos. And then front lit shots when you're using the sun as your main light, as your key light, you're gonna get much more saturated look in your photo. Now, if you want the model to absolutely hate your guts, make sure to not give their eyes any breaks. My eyes are like very hungry. Already? Yeah, like a burnt bag. The sun, the sun's not that bright. And this is what they signed up for. Okay, make sure you their eyes stay open until you see tears falling on their face because getting the shot is what matters. Actually, the exact opposite. <laughs> I actually have them close their eyes for the majority of these shots and have them open uh, just to take the photo because with the sun going directly in, <laughs> it's not a good look. That's fine, close your eyes until I tell you. And go ahead and open. Now, using the sun as my main light, it's gonna give me an image much more rich in color as opposed to when I shoot backlit. So the skies are gonna be really, really blue and the skin tones are gonna to be really rich and golden. So it's a it gives like that, like that. me two different, completely yeah, different styles of photos. Now, if you're interested in how I color graded the images in this video, I am using my very own golden hour portrait presets that are absolutely goaded when you know trying to get that golden hour look for your shots. So link to that will be in the description. One mistake that I always used to make when shooting golden hour was if i'm shooting backlit because cameras have just such good dynamic range nowadays i would intentionally underexpose my image a lot okay so i didn't lose all of the detail in the sky and then i would just in post i would recover the shadows but you know a lot of the times it would introduce noise on the model which is the main focus of the photo so it's a fine line there, you know? I found that slightly underexposing the model, maybe by like a stop where she's just a little dark. I found that that's the sweet spot. So you can easily recover the shadows without introducing noise in the shadows. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't have a flash out there, don't shoot like you have a flash out there to expose your model. You know what I'm saying? You, 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 gotta, find, you gotta find a good balance there. Now for posing, I like to try my best and have the model interact with the environment as much as I can. So since we're at the beach, I asked her to walk along the edge of the water. For some, I asked her to get in the water to get some of those water splashing action photos. I had her sit in the sand for some photos and also had her kneel in the sand as well, but not in the ratchet way. And you know what I'm talking about. Think about 2010, they had the model on her knees spread out, okay, spread out, both hands up on her head like this. That cliche, no, not a fan of that, okay? <laughs> Maybe I'm being a little too harsh. It totally depends on the kind of vibe that you're going for. In my personal style, it's usually a little bit more on the softer side than that high fashion style. Now for my posing, I kept things very simple. And I didn't want Kayla to look forced That's into a pose. Now, let's say for the kneeling shot, her head turned to the side where her eyes closed, gave me more of that dreamy look. Now for this shot, I asked her to take a step forward with her left leg and then go on a tippy toe and then hold on to her hat with her right hand. This is that default Instagram pose that most women use, but yeah. it looks good. The majority of the poses that I used, I simply asked her to just have one hand up near her hat and the other hand near her waist. The majority of the effort that I put into this was just trying to find the best angles to shoot her in. Uh, one hand down though. Yeah. One thing that I always try to do that I, I'm constantly forgetting because I have this ADHD brain, but um, I always try to incorporate props into my photo shoot. Now, that can be as simple as having a pair of sunglasses, you know? It allows you to get different variations of photos and also it gives the model something to hold on to or it can be something like a beach towel in a book where it tells more of a story, right? Now on the beach, they were selling some hats, 
So I purchased one on the spot and it made for the perfect like prop that, like for that. this shoe because she could wear it, but also hold it as she poses. I also saw a guy uh, offering some horse rides nearby. So I took that as an opportunity to get some get really gorgeous shots of her, of her on a horse. horse so like right kind of just taking it that extra step there. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're doing good, right? We're doing good. Put, uh, pointing that way. La cabeza pointing that way. Uh, right. I, I see. Yeah, right. Looking out that way. Perfect. Woo, these are fire. Okay. Looking more down the beach. Like that. Yes, yes. That's perfect. The other horse in the frame now. Like this. Here we go. One, two, three. Now looking. Same thing, same thing. Oh, snap. Good. I'm gonna sleep that way, looking at the water. For my compositions, I always try and incorporate wide, medium, and tight shots. So it's kind of like built in my brain here, you know? So the wide shots, I'm referring to more environmental portraits that show the scenery, right? And I tend to shoot these a lot when I'm at a really nice location, right? All with an 85 millimeter. Medium shots are more of that full body waist up portrait where you can see a little bit of the background, but the main focus is on the model. And then some tight shots where if the lighting is so good on their face, I'll take a tight portrait regardless of where I'm at. But a lot of the times, I'll just normally take the waist up photo and just crop in a little bit if I need to. Because all these cameras have plenty of megapixels for posting on Instagram, you can crop in like, you know, and not lose any resolution. I also really like to experiment with angles. If I'm shooting in a really nice location, I will shoot the photo from multiple angles and also from different heights, like from slightly higher, maybe from like, uh, you know, uh, eye level. And then I'll take some photos from like maybe waist level and a little bit lower than that um, and just get different perspectives on it because you know, sometimes you're going to come home and wish that you had shot it from a slightly different height or angle. And we have digital cameras. What's what are you going to lose out on 30 megabytes on your SD card? It's not a big deal. So I kind of cover my bases and get this angle and get a more dramatic angle. And I'll choose what I like more when I come back home. All right. So it's almost 2024 and it's time to finally finally pull the trigger and get a website with Squarespace. Now, whether you're looking for a website, blog, or you wanna just sell some products online, you have to try Squarespace. It is so easy to use. You can preview and change the entire look of your website with the click of a button. You run into any kind of trouble, you have any questions, they have 24 seven customer support. I make a side income selling my color presets that I kind of promoted in this video, but also my portrait retouching tutorial using the Squarespace online store. Every photographer and videographer needs to have a website. Instagram and Facebook isn't yours. Now, who doesn't love a discount? And if you want 10% off your first purchase, use the coupon code Manny. I'll leave it at the top of the description. Now, I it's, it's, it's ironic that I'm doing this golden hour tutorial when it's damn near, I mean, what? I mean, to be fair, it's Christmas, about 40 degrees outside, which is not bad. But I think also, I think that a lot of these tips that I'm, that I, that I included in this video are kind of universal, universal things, right? These are like, this is like what's built into my brain. Like these are the kind of things that I'm thinking about when I'm on a shoot, regardless if it's golden hour or not. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think these, I think this <laughs> I think these will be pretty helpful uh, for those that kind of just get scrambled. Scrambled when you get on location, you have another human being in front of you. you got scrambled eggs up there. Um, maybe put this on like a notes, notes on your phone. And slowly but surely, you'll start to embed it in your brain and it'll, it'll, it'll come to you naturally over time. Yeah, so thank you.